Hi there and thanks for joining this video as we go through quickly how to, uh, or as quickly as possible, how to register a group series to Office 365. So the first thing is, um, from a requirements perspective, uh, you need an Office 365 account. Uh, that Office 365 account needs to be a business account, probably minimum E3, uh, because that gives you your Skype for Business package. Um, once you've got your Skype for Business package, you can then um, begin to uh, register a group series to it and start to do some testing. Now, uh, if you're fortunate enough to already have one, then that's great. Uh, if not, you can sign up for a free trial in order to test it. If I bring up, for instance, this web page, it's a good example. It's basically a page where you can sign up for a free trial for one month of Office 365 uh, Enterprise E3. Um, the other nice part is it gives you 25 user licenses, so you can basically go through it and uh, you can test various different devices. But yeah, it basically gives you the ability to, uh, to trial this and uh, hopefully be able to get it up and running for yourself uh, without too much difficulty. Okay, so from the requirements of the hardware, what we need uh, is of course a group series itself. So for instance, here I have a group series 500 that we can tell at the front. Um, this group could equally be a uh, 310 or a 700 um, or a, even a 300 I believe as well. Uh, the main thing that we need as well with that ideally is a remote control which is sort of optional but um, really helps with the setup of the device initially um, otherwise you've got to try and get into the web interface and start typing in serial numbers etc. Next part that we have is the touch panel. Uh, the touch panel is 100% uh, a requirement in order to register to Office 365. Uh, it's important to understand that this is the real presence touch not the original polycom touch panel uh, so this is the gen 2 if you like uh, comes in either aluminium or a brushed metal finish uh, and then the other part that we need of course is a camera and microphone from a connectivity wise connecting to the unit we've got uh, power we've got a network we've got HDMI which is going to our monitor and then we would optionally have a microphone here if we were using uh, a separate microphone but because I'm using the Eagle Eye Acoustic which is the microphone and camera combined both of those are going into that connection there so uh, that's uh, everything up and running we also have this um, connector as well this has to be connected on the same network ideally if you can co-locate it on the same switch or whatever it just means that uh, um, you know it should be able to um, connect to the uh, the group series but yeah that's uh, that's the the main requirements and of course from the network these need to be able to get out onto the internet um, and that will uh, enable us to get onto uh, Office 365 both that and the touch panel need to be able to communicate with each other and potentially the internet so uh, yeah that's everything that we need from a hardware perspective so let's move across and start uh, doing some stuff in the interface okay so what you can see here is the interface of the group series um, and uh, just a camera here that just shows what I'm doing so basically the first thing that I'm going to need to do is uh, I want to reset this system because I want to make sure that there's no uh, settings on here that may adversely affect what we're doing so what I'm going to do is just quickly switch this over so I'm going to go into system information diagnostics and I'm going to go into reset system what I want to do is um, the main one is delete system settings I can also delete certificates as well um, and I just want to delete that now if you've got a password in yours your system may request a password in order to do that but mine doesn't so it will just start to uh, uh, take all those settings out and begin to reboot okay so here's the system back up and running so what we're going to do now is just go into here and we're just going to set up the basic settings so we'll set our language uh, accept the end user license agreement and then to be fair for the most part what we're going to do is we're just going to go into advanced so that I can just set the security profile to make it easier for me United Kingdom again group series that's fine for now we can leave all of that as is Now under security, to make my life easier to begin with, what I'm going to do is just wipe out that password. So I don't actually want anything in there for the moment, and that means that whenever I go through the network prompts, it's not going to ask me for anything. I'll add that back in later on just to make sure that we are uh, we are secure. But for the purpose of setting up in this demonstration, we can remove that for now. Uh, we won't bother registering. And finish. So that will now 
be the unit rebooting and we're now back up and running okay so the next part that we want to do now that we've got the system up and running is we want to be able to pair the touchscreen to it so we'll move across to the touchscreen now and we'll start pairing So as we saw from earlier, this is the touch panel. And what we're going to do with the touch panel now is we're just going to pair it to that uh, that group series. So we're going to go into manually pair in my case, and now we're going to type in the IP address of that unit. And we're going to type in the username admin and password if you have one in my case I blanked it in that setting page earlier and this will now pair the touch panel to the group series and there we go that is now paired excuse the focus there on the camera right so now we'll go back to the desktop and we'll go through some of the configuration settings that we need to do so we now need to go into the web interface of the unit itself here we go accept continue to this web page and we now up on the video conferencing system yeah so the couple of things that we need to check first of all we need to go into admin settings and we want to go into general settings and we just want to check for software updates when we check for a software update we just need to see if there's a new version and if we see that there is a new version then we just need to upgrade to that okay so it's telling me that my system is currently up to date so that's fine next thing we need to do is just go to the options under the options here we're just checking to make sure that we actually have the Skype for Business interoperability license installed so this unit here we can see has it installed and therefore it will be good to go and it will actually join to Skype for Business and uh, work as we suspect. Okay, so here we have both the web interface and you'll notice that we have the touch panel and group series on display. And what we're going to do here is just run through some of the other settings, but I just want you to be able to see them on screen as we change them. So you notice at the moment that the UI of the touch panel is the uh, standard UI and the UI that we have on the video conferencing uh, the, the group series there is uh, the standard UI but what we actually need to do first of all is we're going to go into admin settings general settings home screen settings and we're going to enable Skype mode which is at the bottom here so we just open up Skype mode click enable and hit save what you're going to see is that the touch panel display will change and so will the uh, video conferencing system itself so now we have uh, the Skype for Business uh, interface next thing we're going to do is go through and actually start registering the system so once again into admin settings and then we're going to go into network IP network and then we're going to go into SIP we'll later disable HG23 uh, and we're going to go into here enable SIP if it's not enabled already and then we're going to just enter in SIP configure server configuration is auto under the sign in address that we have here we're going to put in our video conferencing system just copy and pasting that out of another sheet here we go and then the username which will be the same You'll notice that these are the long versions, very similar to the SIP URI, uh, and then we also need to put in the password as well. So we enable the password, put that in there, and then the registrar server type we put to Microsoft. And now we're going to hit save. Now, not, certif um, not specified, it's going to go to registration failed. Hopefully what we should see after a while is that it now goes to registered. So we can now see at the top here, we are now registered. Next part that we are going to want to do is we're going to want to enable the calendaring capabilities. So in order to enable the calendaring capabilities, we're going to go down to servers, which is just under here. We're going to go to the calendaring service. We're going to enable the calendaring service. Just wake up the touch panel while we're here. 
and then it's going to ask us for our various different parts. So once again, we're going to put in our um, address at the top, our email address. We're not worried about the domain in Office 365 so much. Then under the user, we're going to put the same. The domain would be RW Lab Setup uh, on Microsoft.com, but we don't need that. And then I'm going to put in my password. If we do auto discover, premium email address, it should hopefully populate with outlook.office365.com, which is what we're seeing there. And then the important bit to understand under here, um, you have the option for how quickly the meeting reminder will come up. Uh, another option for um, reminder tones when it's not in a call. So if you wanted to you know, actually tell people um, when that reminder comes up with a, an audible tone, then that can be useful. And then we also have the show meeting information for private meetings. This, if it's a personal system, you can check this and it will actually come up with the information on screen. If not, any private meetings as you set them in Outlook will, know, uh, will not appear. So now we're gonna save this. And as soon as we save it, we should hopefully see this go to registered. And we're now seeing at the top of the group series and at the top of the touch panel that we're seeing a, a, a calendar appear. Okay, and uh, while we're doing that, we can now see registered on the unit. The next thing we want to look at is adding directory services to the system for the ability to be able to search for users. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to go into admin settings. Expand that just here. Then we want to go into servers, directory servers. And what we're going to do under directory servers is going to take the server type to Microsoft. And what we'll find is, is that if it's not in there already, we want to add our domain. So mine is rwlabsetup.onmicrosoft.com. We just want to add that into the top here in the domain name. Hit save. And then what we should find is that codec should uh, come back saying that the status is registered. So now that we've got this up and running, there's one other bit that I would like to do, which is just a, it's its purely an aesthetics thing, but I also think it's reasonably useful. I want to take this name and I want to actually change this. Um, uh, and I'll show you the reason why, if I quickly show you the um, codec. So if I just move across to the codec there, you can currently see that the codec is saying group series at the bottom, but there's no distinguishable information about what the unit actually is. So from here, what I can do is if I go up to the system then I select to edit the system name which is currently group series I can change this and then what I'm going to do is put in my uh, actual name for the unit or what you would do what you'd actually look up if you want to call the unit hit save and that's just going to change the name on the codec um, it's purely an aesthetic thing but if someone's trying to find it or they want to call it at least now on screen it will actually say what the name of the unit is if I take that back and I just bring that up on screen as you can see there that now shows the full name at the bottom of the screen and it will actually when we eventually get to the touch panel uh, when we reboot the touch panel it will also come up under there as well so uh, that's now been done what we can actually do is start doing some tests so if I bring up my Skype for Business client down here Here's my Skype for Business Client. And what I can do now is I can search for that group series. So if I start searching with group one, there we go. I can see we have group one there, which is this unit. And I can see that uh, it's currently showing as away. Which is no big issue. If I start a video call though, I should hopefully see the touch panel ring. And if I accept that on here, There we go. That's the call up and running. Okay, so I hang that up as the audio went a bit, uh, otherwise the audio goes a bit funky there. Right, so the next part is, uh, now we know that that's working, let's check the scheduling as well. So if we quickly go and open Outlook. Have a look here. What I can do now is if I attempt to schedule a meeting, if I go into my calendar and look here, and we will select to uh, new appointment. Just now come up, let me just resize that. And I'm going to create this into a Skype meeting by pressing the button here. And I'm going to add the 
uh, system in so I'm going to look for group one just going to check name there we go so I found the unit subject test call just extremely original no one ever used that before and now I'm going to send that invite off to the system hopefully what we should see it's me and Curtis in the past oh, let me just change the time on this if it's something more relevant so we'll say 7.30 to 8 send that invite and what we should now hopefully see on the group series shortly is that it will actually appear in the calendar menu okay so we can see that that meeting invites come through and if I just flick between the two so if I look at the codec quickly see on there that we have the meeting at the top there and if I click here on this one we can see that the meetings at the top of that one as well I go back to the main screen I can now using my finger click the join button on here which will initiate the test call and if I go into my Outlook client or if I go into uh, the invite click join a Skype meeting start my video and there we go that's the group series and the system I'm running that we can see here now so everything is uh, as it should be which is fantastic so there we have a basic call setup we have the ability to invite users from uh, calendar invites we have the ability to call directly so we are pretty much up and running there are some other bits that we could do just to uh, uh, make it a little bit nicer uh, if you did have any issues by the way during this um, and the system didn't seem to start registering one of the things that I would check is under the network that you definitely have all of the relevant DNS settings um, that could be a common one that may be causing people issues and you can actually get out on the internet so uh, for instance under here I can see that I've got my IP address I've, I've got all my subnets etc uh, and if I look under my DNS I can see I have my DNS settings at the top there and the other one is the NTP so uh, if you go into your general settings date and time uh, if your time is off then that can also cause an issue in which case you may need to change this to manual and specify another time And that is it so hopefully you like this video and if you did uh, please please feel free to like and subscribe thank you very much and have a good day